United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, I have a few announcements this evening. Uh, the first one is I was given a lot of our people that work in the town hall serve on different boards and uh, I've got a new one shine the light on domestic violence October is domestic violence awareness month purple is a symbolic color for domestic violence awareness there's a, mu a movement across New York State to shine purple lights on buildings wear purple or hold purple events so go purple and talk about it. Awareness is the first step towards real change. So I just want everybody to know that domestic violence awareness this month is this month and pur purple is a symbolic color. And uh, I have to get out my purple tie tomorrow and wear that. So uh, a very, very serious problem in society these days and certainly not one to be taken lightly. So please support it by wearing purple and talking about it. Uh, number two, Senator uh, Gibson, Senator Terry Gibson, held a Veterans and Families Fair, and it was on September 27th, and uh, they noted some very important people, and I would like to just mention that our own Jim Reynolds uh, was, was, was inducted to the Veterans Hall of Fame. Uh, Jim is with the American Legion Post 1758 here in town of East Fishkill. We know it as a Manny Bacon Post. And if anybody knows Jim, he's very involved with Manny Bacon Post. He's involved with all of our Memorial Day events. Uh, anything to do with the veterans, Jim is a great guy. And I just wanted to congratulate Jim on his induction into the Veterans Hall of Fame. I couldn't think of anybody better to deserve such an honor. But Jim is just really, really good people. So congratulations, Jim. Uh, we will be having an Ice House dedication, and that will be this Sunday, October 12th at 3 p.m. at the, at the uh, Historic Society uh, over, let me just see, it's in the Historic Society is actually in Kensington Park, and you can go in there and they'll hold their official opening of the East Fishkill Ice House Sunday. A, there's a museum within the Ice House telling the history of ice harvesting in the Hudson Valley. The Society will be providing free ice cream, hot cider, and cider donuts, as well as special games for children. And there will be a band playing. All buildings, all the buildings on the site will be open for tours. And I, I don't know if anybody's ever been to the Historic Society, but it's like the coolest place around. You actually have to go in Kensington, and I'm not sure of the roads, but it's in there. And it's an old house on the left when you go in, and you drive around, and you park, and they have the original house. They have the carriage house. Then they, we brought over a schoolhouse some years ago. They had, then we brought over the Ice House. And I think if you look at like other towns, historic societies, they're nice. I gotta tell you, our historic society has done a great job. They have carriages, a lot of antiques, you can tour the house. So if you're ever in Kensington and, and check when historic society, the historic house is open, really go see it. That one and the uh, railroad depot are just two really jewels in the town of East Fisher. They're very historic. And uh, really, really something that I'm proud of. I'm proud of our volunteers. And, uh, and I get, can't tell you enough that they've done. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. I would like to mention, speaking of volunteers, just a few things. The moving of the Ice House happened when, when the town purchased the, the WCI property across the street. The old Ice House is located over there. Um, so we donated it to the Historic Society. Now, this was a big house. Uh, Ice House is pretty tall, building substantially built. And uh, it was quite a quite an endeavor to move it. Um, we did donate some funds, I believe, for the foundation, the digging and foundation. But to move it was a very impressive uh, endeavor. And I would like to just thank uh, some of the people that were involved. And uh, John Paraskeva, he did the excavation. Robert Matt Hedges for structural framing for moving. Elwin Hyatt from Hyatt's Garage, who had the truck. Uh, the crane for hoisting the building sections was Glenn Metzger. The moving coordinator is Bill McClellan. The electrical power wiring was Bill Happ. Donation of backfill dirt was Vern Jackson from Jackson Farms. Uh, the museum curator, Carol Broadwell. And the East Fishkill Historical Society president and trustees and Malcolm Mills, the director. Um, really very, very cool thing. So if you get over there on Sunday, hope the weather's nice and really take a look at the old ice house and the, and the rest of the historic buildings. And just one last one, everybody's been asking, brush drop-off. Uh, we're going to reopen brush drop-off on October 15th 
And I plan to close it on November 1st due to budgetary concerns. We're trying to keep it a short window. Um, we will accept brush, brush and leaves, no just leaves, but brush and, and, and debris from your trees. Uh, Wednesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4, and then Saturdays will 9, 9, PM, uh, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, vehicle size from a car, small trailer to a six wheel truck are free. Vehicles larger than six, wheel, six wheels are $15 a load and require a ticket. Proof of residency is required and will be checked. So with those being the announcements tonight, we'll move into our first order of business, and that is to uh, open a hearing to consider a community block grant application for Julie's Jungle, one of our, one of our very good projects, a handicapped adaptive playground, or as I like to say, a playground for children of all abilities. So with that, do I have a motion to open the public hearing to consider a community block grant application? Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. The public hearing is now open. Um, before we start, I'd like to ask any on the board, anybody on the board, do you have any comments or questions? I know we have people from Julie's Jungle uh, organization here with us tonight. Um, any comments, thoughts, or questions? No, just a comment to thank all of them for all their hard work. Uh, Steve Caswell, I believe, is the treasurer. He sent a nice report out today to us. Thank you, Steve. And uh, continue doing what you're doing. And uh, thank you for all your work. Yeah, I mean, that, really, that goes for the whole Julie's Jungle crew. Um, call them a jungle crew. I don't know why you call them a jungle <laughs> crew, but uh, wow. And you know, again, like Julie's Jungle, um, like the Railroad Depot, it's like the Historic Society. You know, somebody, I was talking to somebody the other day. I was out of town for some reason. And I uh, was saying how cool East Fishville is, because East Fishville is the kind of town that when you need something, everybody pitches in. And you can see that with the fire department, with the volunteers, with the different organizations, Julie's Jungle being one of them. I just think it's fantastic, and I think that's what really makes East Fishville a special town. So any other comments on the board? Anybody else before I ask the public? Would anybody in the public like to speak for or against this application? for a community block grant for Julie Shungle. Okay. There are being none, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Public hearing is now closed. Uh, the resolution tonight reads, Whereas a group of residents of the town are soliciting and raising funds to construct an adaptive playground for handicapped children on the grounds of the Limekiln Recreation Center, which is owned by the town, it is the desire of the town to assist in the construction of this wonderful project. Whereas this hearing held today, October 9, 2014, is to receive comments about a grant application that could be made to the Community Development Block Grant for community funding, uh, block grant funding from Dutchess County, and it has been determined the application to help construct Julie's Jungle is the appropriate project. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the town board, does, town board does hereby authorize the submission of an application to the Community Development Block Grant Funding Program of Dutchess County for the construction of Julie's Jungle at the Limekiln Recreation Center of the town in the amount of $100,000. And be it further resolved that the supervisor and all other officials of the town are authorized to take all steps necessary to effectuate this application. Do I have a motion to authorize the grant application for the construction of Julie's Jungle? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, a wonderful project. And with that, I'd like to thank our town clerk for coming in tonight. Because typically, and typically a workshop, we usually sit down there, we usually sit around the table, which is a little bit more informal. But because we had the public hearing tonight, I felt more appropriate to sit up here. So. Thank you, Carol, for coming in tonight. Town clerks were exempt from workshops, but she came in for this one because of public hearing. So I'd like to thank her for that. So. All righty. Next on the, uh, now we move to the open work session. Did you close that section of the meeting? Okay, did, didn't I? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Oh, to I'm sorry. You guys are ahead of me. I thought we did that. I closed the public hearing, adopted the resolution. What else would you like? To close the special. Yeah, oh, to close the special. special. Oh, okay. If we don't, make Carol stay all night. No, I can't have Carol. Do I have a motion to close the special hearing? <laughs> so moved. Oh, do I have a second? Second. Oh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Both motion carried. Aye. Thank you very much. Bye. I hope. Bye. 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 Don't let the councilman leave with the clerk, please.
Sorry, I have a little cold today, so I'm a little bit under the weather. And I certainly appreciate having all the help that I have here. So. All righty. Um, Nip, you don't mind if I proceed to the open uh, work session? Sure. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, under the open work session, the first item is under discussion is the, what we call the I-Zone Redevelopment Law. And if you'll just bear with me one minute, I'm going to read the purpose of the Economic Redevelopment Special Permit that we're developing. The Economic Redevelopment Special Permit was created to allow for the redevelopment and revitalization of existing and formal industrial campuses, economic redevelopment areas, and provide for greater flexibility of uses. The, ES, the ERSP, which is the Economic Redevelopment Special Permit, recognizes that today's industry looks a lot different than yesterday's manufacturing and seeks to create a balance between the economic engines of the past and present and those anticipated in the coming years. The goal of the Economic Redevelopment Special Permit is to stimulate economic development and increase the long-term economic health of the town of East Fishkill well into the 21st century. With new tools, the town of East Fishkill will be able to preserve existing businesses while accommodating new types of businesses in the future. And I know everybody, well, most everybody wa reads the papers, we're, you know, watching to see what IBM is doing. Um, in 1987, I believe it was, we saw the IBM uh, sold off the West Complex and completely shut that down. Uh, and as we've watched over the last years, not a whole lot is going on over there. Just the grass has grown. Uh, finally, Linau did buy it, the Chinese solar company. They did buy it in 2010 with great promise unfortunately, which never materialized. Um, they made a short showing. Uh, Linau is back. They're demo demolitioning a building over there. They're doing some maintenance. We've got, you know, cleaning up the site a bit. Um, but what we really need to do is we really need to, to create economic redevelopment at the west site and with whatever IBM does. We need, we need to be as flexible and uh, try to make these projects work as well as possible because, again, this is an investment in our economic future. So with that, I'd like to thank Michelle Robbins, who's here with us tonight. She's our town planner. And Michelle's put a lot of work into this, uh, developing this with our town attorney, uh, the special permit, and you did the environmental impact laws, the full environmental assessment form and all that, Michelle. So Michelle, I, I do have, just give us a little thoughts on how this would benefit the town. I know you've seen this in other, other areas yes. where they've had the same sort of economic concern. So, so the idea is to um, is basically to um, permit, permit also the creative reuse of the older industrial buildings. So if somebody has a specific use that they want to come in, they can um, apply for a change of use. And um, because the, the campus had um, been assessed under a previous seeker review, mm -hmm. Um, the and we know that currently the activity levels is um, much much, are much much lower than than um, existed at the time when it was at full capacity. We um, we know that there's a certain um, envelope of activity that can be accommodated on that site without having any significant adverse impacts. So we're hoping that um, when when folks come forward um, to to hopefully um, create a new business in the area, uh, we can speed up. The process a little bit because they've already had um, somewhat of a secret review. If it's within an existing building that's already there, we could treat it as a change of use. Now there will be times when we may have to do uh, site-specific seeker, um, you know, especially if there's a, 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 some sort of activity that has a, a maybe a very significant amount of traffic, for instance, right, associated right. with it that would be beyond what may have been anticipated when IBM was open, and that would be a cause for creating a secret, an external secret review. But otherwise, we're hoping that this can kind of streamline the process a bit and make it easier to redevelop the area. Okay, and, and I, I've told the story before I got the call. There was a, a, a commercial realtor and he's in, interested in selling off part of the IBM West complex. It was cold, it was like January, freezing. Can you come out and meet with us? So I went out and met with this busload of people who wouldn't identify themselves, everybody in suits, uh, supposedly uh, a large company looking to build a warehouse. So I, I went out there, obviously if you told me to do something to develop the West Complex, I'll walk out in January on my bare feet. So I immediately went out there and I, I dressed them all. There were about 30, no, I'd say 20 people in the van. And uh, very specific questions, they just come from a site in Connecticut. And one woman asked me, what will it take us to build our warehouse here? How long will it take us? And as I, I've told, I've said before, well, you'd have to go through secret, you'd have to do a lot of environmental review. 
And she goes, well, we just came from the site in Connecticut, and we're told that we can have a building permit in a year. Um, and this is our problem. So I said, no, you'd have to go through CEQA, through the planning board, and it's an expensive uh, uh, proposition. And they thanked me very much. I tried to sell it as best as I could with the location, with the town of East Fishfield, our, our wonderful police department, and everything that we had to offer. Uh, but they never came back. And, and, and I think when you see New York State, and, and New York State is looked upon as being difficult to start a business in because of the regulation, what we're doing today, and I think one of the key, two of the key things is number one, we're trying to redevelop areas that are already industrial. There's about 600 acres out there between Route 52, Lime Kiln, and Route 84. And we do have an internal road that goes right to Lime Kiln Road. We have about, there's about 600 acres that's owned I-1. That was the old IBM and the IBM, there is the present IBM and the old IBM West complex. But by taking the old CICRA, uh reviews, the old uh, approvals, we've set a threshold, as Michelle says, where under that threshold, it's much easier to come in and do a project. And if you have a lot of smaller uh, developers coming in smaller projects, they can come in, in the, under this envelope. So it will make it a lot easier, and we're making the permitted uses a lot more flexible. Um, we're going to work as hard as we can to, to attract economic investment in the town of East Fishkill. In my mind, that is the area to do it. It's already industrial. Um, it won't really affect you know, the outlying residential or the, or the more rural areas. And uh, it is really the location because of the infrastructure that's there. IBM has water, sewer. Um, there's electric power. So that really needs to be the, the area, in my mind, in the town of East Fishkill. And whatever we can do to help uh, redevelop that, I think on the town level, I think is, is very important. So I think that's really, we started this, oh, I don't know, when did we start talking about this? Last April, maybe, something like that, I think it was. Right after I got back from that trip, and I'm still cold, it might have been February, it was still cold. But uh, very important, I think. And what Michelle has provided to the board is the, the, the copy, the special permit, the, the draft copy. Um, the environmental impacts, the uh, environmental assessment forms and all that. And I would like to adopt this, everybody review it. I would like to adopt this law uh, the next, at the next voting meeting. So that being said, I would encourage you either tonight or anytime you have any questions, call us. We can sit down with the attorney, sit down with the planner, sit down with the engineer and, and answer any of your questions. I've reviewed it, and I think it really encompasses everything we need to do. Um, and I, I think it's a very well, well done document. But certainly, I want everybody to take a look, to have questions. I really do believe um, it's a very important thing to do, especially at this point in time, with whatever's happening with IBM, with Global Foundries, which, you know, everything with corporations is up in the air right now. So I think this is probably a good time. So. Anybody would like to ask Michelle anything now? Or, or again, if you read through and you have any questions, we'll make arrangements uh, during, during the week or two. I have a question for Michelle. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> I know you mentioned something about if in case there is a company that uh, demands a higher amount of traffic, that an additional study be done. Uh, I remember when we started this conversation that that was the focus. I, I know I made a comment at that time that whatever studies that we do, traffic is going to be key over there because we are going to have other company open their doors. And I've seen some of the list. So those are going to create traffic. I'd rather, if we can, uh, put it all in perspective now so that we don't have to go back later. I don't know how you feel about that since you conducted most of uh, the study. May I just, yes. just make a comment on that? And, and we do feel the internal road is really critical to going forward. And the internal road from Lime Kiln down to what is the auditorium drive is very critical. So we'd like to see that open. But when we talk about parking, we, I mean, uh, traffic, we've talked about, and just so the council, what I was thinking, my, my thought of the traffic was not overall volume of traffic. What we may see change would be the times of traffic because IBM had had, I don't know how many thousands of employees at their peak. But I think, Michelle, you correct me if I'm wrong, what we're going to see is not everybody coming to the factory, going to work for eight hours and leaving an extra. We're going to be seeing, say, a hospital or something 
different times of traffic. But you'll I believe, see maybe bo multiple di different distribution of traffic. Yes. And different um, times of the day probably w will happen. So there will have to be some analysis of what that traffic will do, and they'll also have to consider all the other background growth in the town that's also occurred since IBM went in. Um, as it, all of this will be considered, and the, the, currently the um, town's traffic engineer. Is, is well aware of all the new development that's happened on the corridor and has information related to the, the older studies. And so they, they pretty much have established thresholds so they understand when something might trip an impact in one location or another. So in other words, if, we, if and when we have saturated with, uh, let's say, the type of business we want to put there, we might say, well, this is not that, well, there may have to be some sort of traffic study and per perhaps even some mitigation proposed. Right. But at this point, since we don't know what the uses are, it's really impossible to know okay. at what point the site will reach its capacity. Because I've seen a hospital on the list, and hospitals usually they have frequency of traffic at all times of the day and night. So, right. Uh, yes. I, I was wondering if we took that in perspective when you did the whole analysis of uh, the traffic in the area. Yes, and we, we, we took into consideration all the potential possible uses that could be there, but um, what I'm saying is that we haven't necessarily studied all the traffic impacts of those uses because at this time we don't know the mix of uses that will be on that campus. And, and so actually what may happen is we would have some uses come in, hopefully, it would be nice to have some uses come in, and we, we, may, we may well reach a point where the traffic, our traffic engineers, Hudson, uh, tra our traffic study people, Hudson, Hudson Valley, Valley engineers. Valley. engineers, Hudson Valley Engineering, who do, uh, Brendan does a very good job. Um, we would call Brendan and ask him to do uh, a subsequent study of possibly this specific use, okay. especially once we get closer, hopefully we'll get closer to the original thresholds, and then say a hospital comes in and there's a question, well, as part of their coming in, because there still will be site plan review if they build a new building, then we would look to having a supplemental traffic study performed at that time. And something like that may actually indicate that due to the area, they may have to put in a turning lane, may have to put in, contribute to a light request from DOT, a light or a study. So, uh, but our traffic, our traffic engineers have already looked at the global aspects. So. And, and I think we should also remember several years ago the board changed the traffic study process in the town and we've yeah. modernized that in that the town board selects a consultant who performs the traffic studies for all projects. In the past you would have the developers mm -hmm. performing their own traffic studies, submitting them to the town, the town hiring uh, a traffic consultant to review the other traffic consultant report and it was uh, a, a much slower process and more incumbent. And the, new, the newer system, which we have, is that our consultant does the traffic study. The applicant then has the option, if they wish, to refute it, et cetera, or they can accept it. So it streamlines the process. Mm -hmm. It also uh, created the fact that our traffic consultant, as uh, Michelle has said, keeps all of the other studies and is knowledgeable then of the whole corridor, et cetera. And that really helps us keep a better handle on what traffic things are going to be needed. Good, good point. And one of, the, one of the things I think that we did a few years ago that was very good was to hire our in-house traffic consultants, Hudson Valley Engineer, because, and as, he, as the attorney says, by having the one, the one traffic consultant on our, on our team, he can look at the big picture and, and, and add any new uses or what have you. So uh, traffic is always a concern, but I think uh, we, have a, we have a good team to handle that. If I could also add, we also have a more direct dialogue with DOT, with the, with the same traffic consultant, as opposed to in the past where it was kind oh, of Oh, that's true, because, yeah, because it was kind of hit and miss. You didn't know who they were talking to over there. No. What Good. was that again? I'm sorry. Well, we have a more direct dialogue now with our traffic consultant with DOT, as, as we had in the past. Uh, so, you know, they are aware of each project that's coming along, and, you know, we're meeting with DOT, you know, multiple times per year on these projects. So we've established... You know, that report with DOT that we didn't have in the past. In the past, the independent traffic consultant who represented a developer would go see DOT on their own and then come back to us yeah. with the report. And with their they, report, yeah. And now we're sitting at the table with DOT, so that, that's much better. Yeah. So, uh, so again, I think this is a law that needs to be passed, and I think the timing is probably pretty appropriate. So, uh, 
Anybody else have any questions on it? Or if I, like I said, if you want to review it and, and, and stop in during the week or the week after, I'm more than happy. I think the traffic will be, hopefully it'll be greater than it's been for the last four years. Right. But it's never, I don't care what you put over there, it's going to be as bad as it was 20 years ago. Because you didn't get out of that on 52 line kiln or any of those roads 20 years ago. 30 years. You'll never, you'll never get that many cars again. No. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, I was born and raised to I was born and raised to Wikipedia. So they build IBM, so what do I know? We're raised up on the farm. So coming down to fifty two, right after they opened it, I don't think IBM knew the impact. You come out and it was just a line of cars coming from IBM at like four in the afternoon. And nobody would let you out. And they would just move and it was then and after that, it was shortly after that they realized they needed to move in shifts. They started letting them go off in twenty or, or ten or twenty or fifteen minute shifts. But boy, when they first opened up, you could, I couldn't agree more, you couldn't get out of there. But I don't think we're going to see that again. No. I don't think we'll see that again. So, uh, but did, very important, we do. We had the see. LIE in Oakville. Yeah, for, for a period we did. <laughs> the parking lot. All righty, so if anybody has any questions, again, please contact any of our professionals during the next two weeks. I feel it's very important that we would adopt this law and uh, I think, uh, thank Michelle and Tom, our, our attorney, for all their work on it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, number two on the discussion is going to be a budget presentation. So uh, as we know, it's budget time. And I submitted to the uh, town clerk, the controller, and I submitted my preliminary budget. I believe that was on September 30th. And then October 3rd, the town clerk provided to the town board what then became the preliminary budget. And uh, we're going to have a little, little discussion on that with our controller here tonight. Um, oh, before we start, guys, the water bottles, you put them on the floor, it kind of makes us look like, you know, we're sitting out somewhere playing cards or something. I, sorry, that's one of my pet peeves. I don't like to see stuff there. Thank you very much. Um, as I said, we did the budget, and just a, a little overview, I imagine there was a time in the history of the town when doing a budget was fun. I don't think we've seen that kind of time in quite a while. Um, which actually goes back to why the special redevelopment permit is so important. Because when we look around now, um, we have a property tax cap. We have a sales tax cap. Revenues are falling off in the mortgage taxes. So with all of our revenues being capped or falling off, um, nobody seems to be looking at the expenses that keep rising. So as I said, I'm sure it was fun years ago to do a budget. It's been very difficult over the last few years with the economic uh, realities. Um, but there are certain things the town does. We provide services. We have a police department. We plow the town roads. We have sports facilities, very good sports facilities. Um, building departments, we administer laws that come down to us from the federal to the state to the county government. We, 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 we have to uh, administer a lot of laws as far as assessment, building permits, tax receiving, and all that in court. So these are the services that we provide. Now we have to provide these services, but with the revenues falling and expenses have been going up significantly. Um, we, we've been very, very diligent in trying to do things as efficiently as possible. And one thing I would have to say with the budget, we were getting, we, I went through this budget line by line. And it, when you see your budget, you'll see there's a three year historical. So you look back three years and see what the historic, try to, try to envision the historical trend. Um, there's some things that you'll see, we don't have uh, fireworks at community day anymore. We have, we have fireworks at the 4th of July. Um, we pay some of our senior trips. We pay part of that for our seniors. Unfortunately, the way it's gotten, we're going to be paying a little bit less for the seniors. We still love our seniors, but maybe there'll be one less trip or maybe it'll cost a little bit more. Um, our, our free concerts in the park. We have so many free concerts during the year. There may be one less or two less. We will still provide the services, but because of the economic constraints, um, we cannot provide them to the to the to the manner at the manners which we have in the past. And this is just something we have to deal with. Um, again, I feel that with some of the things we're doing here, because I said we cannot we cannot depend on New York State to help us because we have two percent tax cap. 
uh, and a lot of their expenses are the core driving expenses, which is driving uh, our, 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 our expenses so high. Um, the county, uh, we have a, tax, a sales tax cap, so we can't expect that to go away. So really, whatever we do, we have to do. We cannot depend on any other government or any other agency. We really have to do it ourselves. That's why, again, why I think the Economic Redevelopment Special Permit is so important and uh, why the controller and I actually worked very hard for the last, I'd say, two and a half months. I'd like to thank our controller, Mark Posniak, for all of his hard work. And uh, Mark, I'll leave it to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. This is just a very high level overview of the process and the budget itself. If you Contro Controllers never speak loud. They're always low key. And the answer is usually no. That's usually the controller's no answer. No or maybe. Yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> um, Never yes. You want to do something with the lights before we do the PowerPoint, or you want to? If everyone can oh, see, no. I'll leave The attorney's going to take care of the lights. Uh, oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. He did it. I thought for sure they'd just all go off. <laughs> It'll come on. Okay, so the, uh, a detailed copy of the budget can be obtained um, at the clerk's office or it'll be online soon. Um, we're not going to go through line by line here, just a, a, a summary and overview. Okay, here it comes. So first I just wanted to go through the uh, calendar, the budget calendar. John touched on some of these uh, dates. We filed the tentative budget with the town clerk on the 30th of September. Clerk presented the tentative budget to the town board on the 3rd of October. Now the town board has the opportunity to make any changes um, up until five days before the public hearing, at which point we freeze the changes and the clerk must publish the preliminary budget. Uh, the public hearing is scheduled for November 6th. Uh, we can adopt the final budget that night, or you have the option of making additional changes up until the 20th of November final budget has to be adopted by the 20th. Uh, some of the things that John and I tried to bear in mind when we were working on the budget, stay within the tax cap, which we always have as a town, um, reduce the amount of fund balance that was appropriated to help fund the expenditures. Uh, the goal was to um, appropriate zero and we'll get there one day, but we really drastically reduced how much fund balance we were using um, in this upcoming budget. We went from about 471,000 being appropriated this year down to 75,000 in 2015 in the general fund. Uh, wherever possible, make cuts that will have the least impact on public services. It wasn't possible to do in every circumstance, and John mentioned a few areas that might get touched, uh, but for the most part, we tried to uh, protect the services that are um, being provided to the town residents. Continue to look for ways to be more efficient. We've had uh, a number of big savings in the past with the uh, changing of insurance, the salt spreaders, um, in-house engineering department, uh, new water and sewer operator. I think we've sort of run out of opportunities for these big savings, these hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar a year savings, but we're going to continue to look on a lot of the, the little things. Uh, in that vein, we will be attending the county's consolidated services meeting next week to see if there's any potential there. Really don't know, but we explore every... I'm going to have to make a comment about this. Yeah. Um, anybody get their check? I saw something in a newspaper a while back that New York State was going to send us all a check or something like that. Kids are too old. Yeah. I didn't get a check. Well, know. there's... Your kids are too old. There's, oh, is that what it is? There's, there's oh, different types of checks. Oh, really? Anyone with a child under 16 or 17 in the household got a check for $350. Oh, really? Oh, so I'm not getting a check. Do you have a child under 16, 17? Okay. So I'm not getting a check. They're in the mail. I, I got right. one. <laughs> so checks in the mail. At the top of the um, list of... Um, you, that means you make too much money. Yeah. Now, the, the, but the reason I bring this up is because uh, the controller and I are going to go to the county's consolidated service meetings next year because New York State has a, a, a very difficult vision that they are going to mandate we share services. Now we already share services with Beacon, we share our assessor with Beacon, our highway department has always co cooperated with other highway departments over the years. Um, we, we do whatever we can to share services. Unfortunately, the governor has decided that 
none of the old sharing services count. You have to come up with new ways to share services, and, and we're 50, 52 square miles, and we're located where we're located, so I'm not sure <coughs> what services the governor thinks we can share. We certainly are gonna go to find out, and if we cannot find a certain number, and I forget what the number of savings we have to have in, in shared services, yeah. it was large, if we can't find that, we will be penalized, which I, I'm a little bit upset with this because I think we try to run as efficiently, more efficiently than New York State does. And yet, we have to find consolidation. But we will go up there with an open mind and try right, to- we'll see what they have to say. And see what they have to say. Who knows? One of, one of the things actually that has been kicked around for years, and I haven't, the highway superintendent isn't here tonight, so I can't really discuss it with him. Uh, would we plow county roads now? Because the county, is wherever their DPW is, and they have to come all the way down here. So one of the things that had been talked about for years, and I don't know if that is going to be on the table when we go up to the county, but they did send us a letter talking about the road, uh, which road maintenance. So maybe, and I'd have to talk to the highway superintendent, if we're here, if we do a county road, will that contribute to our consolidation? Um, but that's something we'd have to look into. Right. So, thank you, Mark, and I'm sorry, and I, now I know no, I'm not okay. getting a check. <laughs> You'll get it. You'll get another. You'll no, get another check. Tell my wife we're not getting a check. She read the paper. So the the way the budget exists now, a, a typical house, which I said is roughly three hundred thousand dollars in two thousand fourteen, paid eight hundred sixty three dollars in town wide taxes. In two thousand fifteen, that same house will pay approximately eight hundred ninety three dollars. Um, but getting to the point about this rebate, because we're staying within the tax cap, that $30 increase for this particular house will be refunded by the state. The only requirement is that we, we stay within the tax cap and, and there's no reason that we won't. Can you, can you explain for the people, I mean, I asked this at the, when we got the day we got the budget, because everybody hears the 2%, the max cap that we can go. Right. Can you explain what's not in the cap for the people you know, when they put this law into effect that you can't go over this, can yeah. you explain to the people, the general public, what doesn't count in that cap? That's why it's three points. That's why it's actually three and not the two? Right. It's, well, first of all, it applies to the town levy, including special districts. So if they're, so this is just the town-wide increased general and highway fund. So our total levy isn't going up by 3.4%, but the, the town-wide levy is. Also, there are um, exceptions for um, the changes in the pilot, which are, is set to take place this year. It'll be flat for the next 18 years, but in this one particular year, there's a decrease of about $130,000, so we're allowed to offset that with um, property tax increase. Uh, there's other factors as well. It's not really a 2% tax cap, it's 2% or uh, the rate of inflation, whichever is less, and in this year it was 1.56%. So that counts as a multiplier based on last year's levy and the growth in the town. So new homes in the town, additions to existing homes, things like that, they calculate what the total value of those new additions were and were allowed to increase by that percentage as well, and that was six tenths of a percent or something like that. But, but I also think to answer, the way I would answer your question, I think is, we stay within the cap in creating how much taxes we need to raise, but then when we apply that to the assessment role, the assessment role changes. So mm -hmm. that's why sometimes it shows a higher increase because if the assessment role is less, because we're at full market value, so we all know everybody's house is worth less, so when that changes, it changes what the taxes, how they're dispersed, and that's why you get two different numbers. You get the tax cap number, the increase of you know, uh, no more than 1.42, but then when you apply it to the assessment role, it may be higher because the assessment role is different. So right. it's, I'm it's not still, I'm not questioning it's still within the cap, to, though. I mean, understand more, why it's with the tax cap. It's a very why that number is different. It's a complex formula, complex. but because a lawyer made it up, and they came up with a term, and nobody <laughs> understood. Yes. Them. There's other exceptions too. They want to apply this year. And they didn't ask year. town lawyers about it. <laughs> yeah. Um. But that $30 will be refunded. Uh, as John alluded to before, next year the same type of refund will be in place, assuming we meet additional um, requirements, including uh, consolidated savings. It has to be 1% for the next three years. You have to have a plan for 
it's again very complicated. One percent of our budget, of our levy. or our ba levy, basically one one percent of the levy. Okay. Right. So that's you know in the neighborhood of one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Not the to, twenty million, the twelve million. The twelve the million. Yes. yes. Okay. You have to be able to illustrate that savings each year for the subsequent three years. Right. Um, this thirty dollar refund will hit homes in East Fishkill in September of 2015, along with any potential um, rebates for other taxing districts like the school, um, the library, the fire district, if they've also met the requirements. Uh, later this year, you may also see if the school district that you reside in stayed within the cap for their current budget year, you'll also get a refund this, this fall for the, just for that. Um, spending trends, so in 2010, um, you can see where our total, these are actual expenditures for the years 2010 through 2013, and then the budget for 2014 and 15. Um, so we've been able to hold expenditures flat for the last five years. Um, every dollar increase that we've seen in one area, we've found a way to save a dollar somewhere else. So the reason taxes are going up is because some of our other revenues have gone down. This is just a chart that illustrates some of the key revenue and expenditure lines, some of the most significant ones. In 2005, our mortgage tax revenue was enough to cover our pension and health insurance expenses and have a surplus of about $250,000. In 2013, it's about a $3 million a year deficit, just comparing those three numbers. So between lost revenues and increasing costs, you know, it's over $3 million per year change between 2005 and 2013. So although, again, we've been able to hold expenses, we're still closing gaps. Um, but Mark, before yep. you, you, you click to the next screen, you know, I, I would like to point out that the two, and obviously, unfortunately, the revenue is, the arrow is going down. And the, the expenses are the two that are going up. And the pension expense and the health insurance expense are the two main drivers in this instance. These are two significant yeah. expenses. And the pension has gone through the roof, starting in, I, I believe we talked about, what, 06 being like $600,000 or something like that. Right. Up to $1.72 million this year. Right. So uh, it goes up hugely. but. I just want to point that out, and, and the New York, and the pension is really just a bill we get from New York State comes every November. Uh, New York State doesn't ask; they don't. They just give you the bill, and you pay whatever that bill is by the time it's due, and that's basically what that is. So, uh, I think I, I commend uh, all of our people, our highway department, our police department, and everybody's work together to keep expenses down to offset these increases that we see. And we probably should point out that the state constitution says. The only pension you can offer your employees is the New York State retirement pension, which is under the control of the state. Mm -hmm. So you don't have the option of changing plans or going to a different company. You're kind of locked into, you are locked in it's by the Constitution law, yes. with the, the New York State pension system. There's no exception to that? No. No. It's, it's mandatory. And the it's legislature has made changes, but they've made it for future employees as opposed to your current there are six different tiers of benefits each benefit each tier the higher the number the tier the less of the benefits so they've attempted to regulate it that way but there's been no movement to perhaps amend the state constitution to say that you could go to a different program different company so right now you have no choice if you have an employee they have to be a member of the state system uh, mark um, on any of these trends, do you see any of them improving in the near future, or is there a light at the end of the tunnel, or yes. is this an oncoming train? Right, so the mortgage um, tax number, I don't see any immediate relief. Um, it's holding flat. It's not getting worse, but it's not getting better. Um, we've done some things with the health insurance over the last couple years that have sort of flattened the growth. It's still going up, but not going up as fast as it was. Uh, with some high deductible health insurance policies, et cetera. And most significantly, the pension expense will certainly flatten off and actually decline with a high degree of confidence over the next year or two. 
you can't, it's hard to predict like beyond that, but my guess would be that it's going to continue to go down for probably the next five years. What, they're overfunded? No, it's large, the rate that they um, apply is based on two things that are changing. One is market returns. You know, we're finally, they look at a five year rolling average and we've, we've dropped the crash from that uh, rolling average. Um, and market returns have been pretty good. And the other thing that Tom alluded to, the changes over time in the pension system, the contribution rates are less for tier six employees, more recently hired employees. So as time goes by, uh, the amount that we contribute is less and less. And as those employees come on board. Uh, so the, the biggest benefit we'll see in the, in the future is, is a reduction in the pension expense. Um, this is just a very simple graph trying to illustrate where um, tax payer, uh, property tax and other revenues uh, are being allocated. The highway department and the police department each make up about a third of our total expenditures. Um, the other um, items, culture and recreation, home and community services, and green seems to have disappeared. That's um, general government functions like three of us here. Um, you guys make as much as the highway just department? <laughs> We're just examples of what's oh. included in that three. No, the police. <laughs> police is uh, the, the reddish, brownish. Thing there. Um, ah, this is a little funky. Uh, this is actually uh, how, yeah, where your property taxes go. So there are four different school districts within the town of East Fishkill. I took an average of the four. It represents about 75% of your um, property taxes. Um, the county is about 13%. The town is about 9% of your total property tax bill. The two different bills you receive. Yeah, so when you get your taxes, you, you combine your school. And if your you combine your school and your yeah. town, this is that we were only about nine percent of your total annual of tax your total bill. property tax bill. Yep. Um, fund balance projections. Again, we talked about trying to use less and less fund balance as we move forward. Um, based on our current projections, we'll have um, fund balance uh, totals in general of and highway combined of about 1.8 million at the end of 2015. One thing I would like to say about when you talk about fund balance, um, when Hurricane Irene hit a few years ago, uh, we were very hit very, very hard. Uh, unfortunately, Dutchess County did not declare a state of emergency. I believe, was it that one or no, maybe it was the one before, no, it was, a, it was a storm before, I'm sorry, it was a big snowstorm. And uh, it was very specific to the town of East Fishkill in this area, and Dutchess County didn't, didn't uh, declare a state of emergency. So we got no funds from any other agencies to help us out. And I remember cleanup for that storm was like $800,000 out of the highway budget. Right. So yep. that's why it's nice to have, in case of a storm or in case of some unforeseen circumstance, we were able to clean up that mess and get back on our feet because we weren't going to get any help from anybody else. So. Right. Uh, just a few notes. The tax levy won't exceed the tax cap, as we mentioned. We've never exceeded the tax cap. And because we're going to be under the tax cap, any increase in property taxes this year will be refunded to property owners. Uh, other notes our current CSEA contract expired on 12-31-13. Uh, so that, however that, those negotiations ultimately end up playing out may affect um, the 14 and 15 um, year budgets. Sales tax revenues are expected to increase only slightly in 2015. Um, mortgage tax revenues, again, no expectation for them to recover to the place uh, they were eight years ago. Uh, we talked about, again, pension expenses expected to decrease. And uh, just a note that we will likely be um, adjusting water and sewer rents in 2015 again. Um, to make sure that our revenues in those districts are sufficient to support operations. And that's all included in the budget numbers that you see. So that's the end of the presentation. Um, I don't know if there's any questions or. And one thing I would like to point out, you know, when you do a budget, a budget really is a projection. I mean, that's why we use the last three, three years 
um, historic, so you can go back, look at the last few years, and you can kind of see a trend. And then we try to project forward with a best guess to see where we're going to go in 2015. So uh, I think it's a good budget, um, but certainly the board, and I know many of our board members have already spoken with the controller, but now this is the board's time to take a look and ask the controller tonight any questions or come in anytime, anytime you want to discuss the, the budget. So. Any questions for the controller? Nope. Good job, Mark. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. John had all the hard work to do. I just we, had a, we had some tough times there doing that one, but uh, I think we're in a good place to, to, to move forward. We made all the slashes across the state right now. Line by line. How many pens Some of these use? people don't yeah. like you. No, it, you know, and that, <laughs> and you know what that, and that is it. It's difficult, you know. Uh, we've, we, we, people have left through attrition or retirements and they're not necessarily rehired or, you know, billed and all that. So, yeah, it's, it's a tough one. But and, and in the end, we need to still maintain our services and, and do the best job we can. So, okay. thank you, Mark. All right, that's our budget presentation. Um, I did, and I, I, I'm a little bit remiss, uh, I did have to bring up something I need to talk to the board about tonight. We have a couple of issues. Um, the Cannon Wellfields across the street. We're developing the Cannon property wellfields. We've already developed, how many wells over there, Scott? Two, Two wells we've Two developed. And uh, I think we've made applications to DEC for them. That's correct, for water supply. Yeah, yeah. Um, these wells here are going to supplement our Hamlet well system. And I know the Toll Brothers is interested because they have water needs also. And we recently just got a draft letter from uh, the EPA. They're very interested in drawing the water from the Cannon property well fields to the Ryan Drive Superfund site. They, they, they're very interested in this. As a matter of fact, we've been having regular, regular discussions on this project. Um, but we are getting to a point where we need to fund it. We've been really basically doing it out of in-house and out of our, 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 our current budget. Um, but we are getting to a point now. We know that Toll Brothers is going to contribute. Uh, the EPA is looking. They understand the EPA is a little cheap, but they do understand that there's going to be uh, an amount they are, they are going to contribute to, to this project. So, uh, but what I would like to ask the board to do, I'm going to ask the town engineer to draft up uh, a schedule of what the uses are going to be. I'd like, I'm going to ask the board at our next voting meeting to authorize up to a million dollars bond for the Hopewell, the Cannon property well fields. And that will be paid for by the enterprise fund once it's up and running. But we're, we're really to a point where we need to do some serious engineering and we need to get ready because, uh, as I said, a lot of these things are coming together now, and uh, I'd like to move forward with them. So I, I'm going to ask the town engineer if you'd draft up uh, something for the board to review it over the next couple of weeks. Um, I don't. I think up to a million dollars will be fine for what we need to do, and uh, we'll sort of circulate that to the board. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want you to know that um, the total project. Well, I believe total is going to be contributing. 900,000? 950,000. Nine and then, and we're not sure where the EPA is, but right. they know it's We gave them a figure of formula. Yes. Yeah, so they're going to be a similar, a similar amount. Or so, uh, yeah. yeah. And I guess so. just to be clear that whatever um, the water will be sold to our other existing water districts, and so that will be recouped in water rates, which yes. will pay any money that you borrow. Yes. But the money that you're borrowing is really just to get the project going, Absolutely. and then we'll be getting the money in from toll and probably the EPA, yep. but if the EPA doesn't happen, we won't build it as no. big as... We'll scale, the project. We'll scale, it back, right? we'll scale so the project back. But it, we have it, to it, yeah. keep moving to get the DEC water supply uh, permit granted. Yeah, but we, if, uh, if EPA, and I don't think this is going to happen, i got to tell you, I've never seen such interest from the, from the EPA in the last few years. They are very, very uh, determined to get this project done. So, uh, again, like I said, we got a draft letter a few weeks ago, and uh, once they finalize the wording, we'll get it out to the town, to the town board, and uh, talk about it and get, their, get the approval. So, like we did with the Toll Brothers letter a few weeks ago. So, all right, so we're going to be doing that. I'll get some memo out from the town engineer. And uh, that being said, I also have another issue that we are probably going to have to borrow some money for. We have some uh, problems with our police department and our highway department septics. 
um, over in that area of town. It's a difficult area, it's a lot of rock, and there are two facilities, well, I'd say 30 years old probably, um, but we're having significant septic issues over there. So there's two ways to fix this, otherwise you could fix a septic, but in the case of the police department, the area is so small, it's gonna be difficult, but we do have the wildflower sewer line. So in my mind, and, and Scott and I have been discussing this lately, uh, we should connect them up to our Hamlet sewer. In, in the end, I think that's gonna be the best way. We'd be looking at probably a, maybe a $300,000 project, get the sewer line to the police department, into the, into the uh, highway department, um, but it would be paid over a 25 year period. It would be something that would be paid for by those two entities. And I think in the long run, it's probably the most uh, best way to solve this problem because I think we do anything over there now, we're gonna have constraints due to the property sizes, the type of percolation, it's a lot of rock, and, uh, and the uh, regulations from the, the Board of Health. So that's something. So I'm actually gonna be looking to the board and we will write this out. The town engineer will submit a uh, a proposal or a breakdown of it would look like $1.3 million. It would be $1 million for across the street, and it would be $0.3 million to take care of the situation with our police and, and uh, highway department. So, all right, anybody have any questions about it? Uh, <clears throat> could you run the numbers again? I know we're going to get the actual figures, but as far as getting the money from Toll Brothers, how much are we getting from them? $950,000. And that is to bring the line? Well, that is probably what Scott could explain that's better. To, that's to provide a supply of water to them, storage and water. So Originally, their project was being built with a tank of this. Yes. yes. So in lieu of that, they, that cost was $750. they are adding 200000 and they would come in, and, and that would assist in building the facility across the street. The facility across the street gross would be about $3 million. And, yeah, three one. But in addition to that, along with that storage would be the uh, second phase of the water purchase, which we would also provide that water as opposed to them buying it from the county. So they will become a customer of ours too? Yes. So that will go toward the building the facility and bringing the water to them, correct? Right. Yes. That's yes. the water project. That, yeah. that sum is going towards the total project. And then there would be a connection into the Hamlet Water District, which has no other capacity now, needs uh, alternate source. We're maxed out. And then there's plans down the road to service some of our other districts that are either maxed out or have water quality, water quality. issues or are going to have that. And this source would be able to uh, supplement that. And all of those districts, depending on how many gallons they buy, will pay to the general fund sufficient monies to cover the bond cost. And I know as far as the EPA, uh, I think you gave us a number that they were going to give us in order to bring the water from here to the to the site that yeah. is affected over there. Yeah. Well, what it we're going to do is we've, we've given them a, a point at which we're going to provide them water. And we said, this is what you're going to get, this is how many gallons, and this is the pressure. Of course, the engineers have been all involved in this. We had actually discussed building a tank, but we're not going to be building our tank on the site because for our needs, we may not need a tank, and it's going to be so. It's good. Our 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 system then will be a lot cheaper. And EPA understands that if indeed they need a tank somewhere along their route, they will have to build it. And we're discussing. Scott has already developed the formula for all the costs, and Hopewell Glen will be paying, or EPA will be paying on the same formula that Hopewell Glen or any other user will be paying for yeah. that matter. Yeah, I don't want to take credit for the formula, John Metzger up with the formula but he did a good job with the formula. he did a good job and i yes, reviewed it and we have a good formula yeah, so. yeah but with the epa what they will do is they will build the entire system at their cost turn it over to the town just like shenandoah and it's similar to shenandoah yeah. the water comes from fishkill but the tanks up the top of uh, the hill right so it would be the same here as right. the water would come from the cannon field but the tank right. maybe elsewhere in the yeah. town yeah. um and the epa then would give a monetary contribution based on this formula for the construction of the right. roof, yes. right. And so. the reason that we're looking at potentially moving the tank is as we got into the engineering, the fire field became a big issue out on Ryan Drive, and we didn't feel that at this location we could provide adequate fire flow all the way on the far end. So that's why we're looking at it differently now. 
that and we can now utilize our existing tank and just expand our clear well and yep. based on our immediate need here we, we think it's a less expensive way to go. So I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a reasonable project for us to undertake. So at this time uh, we're still negotiating with the EPA as far as the cost. I told that we had an idea before. Yeah, well they have, they have the, uh, the formula. They're cheap, as we say, but they understand. And you know, the one good thing about this formula is there's such detail that when you compare it to, say, the whole book, let me say this is what they're paying, they really have no defense. I believe the formula speaks for itself. Right, it's broke out based on usage for yeah. each entity. The one, thing, the one thing that is different is the fact that we're not going to be building the tank. So that comes out of that. So they will be right. responsible for right. the tank. And to clarify that, not an elevated tank right. up on the top, we're going to actually be building a large clear well tank. Down at grade, so which there will, will be, be storage added, but it won't be across the up, on a mountain. up on the mountain. Yeah, yeah. And the other, the other, I would like to point this out, Tom, that the one difference between the Shenandoah line and this line, we bought, we have to buy the water, unfortunately, due to some contract with Fishkill, we have to buy the water from Fishkill, Fishkill, who just doubled our water rates last year, so. They say we will control our own destiny. As a wise attorney once told me, he who controls your water. Right. And unfortunately, right now we're dealing with fish fuel, right. but uh, it's and better than what's next because make, they made uh, making I think a sixteen million dollar improvement to their system. They're having some water quality so issues of their own. We're going to see some hikes with the but, county rates. But if we could just go back to the two things, though, we should know with DPA, they have not gotten their final approval no. to go ahead. Right. So we're that's still in the one design. Thing. Number yeah. two, they they don't know how much they're going to be drawing until the engineers and they're working on it. That's what the supervisor says a weekly call. The modeling to know how much water they need because when they build a system, I guess the health department regulations is they have to build fire flow into the capacity of the system. So they are still analyzing what their exact needs are. So when that all comes together, we'll know their piece. But after the conference call, yes, it seemed like everybody has come to an agreement. We're, we're getting closer and closer, yeah. 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 So we'll I think they're at a point they can actually start their modeling. Yeah. So. so Hopewell Glen's going to be part of the enterprise fund. They'll be buying from it. That water district will buy water from the enterprise fund, as will the other districts that need. Hopewell Glen has their own water That's district. That's an established water okay, district. Okay, Hopewell Glen. So that won't change. No. Okay. And the storage, we we don't need additional storage. No, we do. We're going to increase our storage by I think one hundred sixty thousand. Where? Where? Be across the street. It's a clear wells down level. Storage. Not a tank. No, no. no. Storage no. for our systems will be across the street. The Ryan Drive, they haven't identified yeah, where they're going to need right. it yet until they do their modeling. That's the EPA project. So that was the cost that you were talking about infrastructure across the street, building. Well, there's, there's filtration, there's storage in the clear well, there's piping out of this area to connect to Fishkill Road. So that, so it's all those components. There's the wells themselves. And that will be about three million, you said? I think we're at about three one fifty something. That's like if that. the EPA connects. Yes. yes. And that we could scale that back if they don't yeah. connect, yeah. So when you figure if the toll is gonna to put in a million, EPA is gonna be put in a million something. So their number was a little bit higher based on the ninety seven thousand gallons that they're projecting. Right. So I think we had them at like about a million five. All right, but with the engineer, we'll get out uh, an analysis for everybody. I would like to move on it um, because the way it's going, uh, we need to be developing these wells, these well fields, and getting them up and running. And we do have needs in other, other areas too, so. All right, so I just wanted to bring that up. And, the, and believe me, the septic thing, uh, we had a little problem a couple months ago, and now uh, the highway department, we're going to have to do something with that. And there, in my mind, it just is just simpler, just I know it's a little more expensive, hooked to the sewer system, so we're not redoing our septic fields two, three, five years down the road, and because of the space limitations, it's going to be a problem anyway. So, so. Scott, when you give us those figures, uh, you'll be giving us, I know the police department probably won't be able to do it, but to fix the existing system at uh, the garage. We're going to look at that as well. Yes. You're going to be. You're going to give us we're, the comparison as far as scores. We're going to look at the We're going to be looking repairing. The as septic. I said, maybe the police department not, but the other one. You know, if you yes, can give us gonna, both we're figures. We're going to do a comparison. Yes, we are. 
Okay. Well, that's it for the discussions for the evening. Uh, I'd like to close the work session and just begin now with liaison reports. Peter, anything from the highway department? Well, he was working until you just spent all the money. <laughs> um, finally finishing up that drainage project that we, up on uh, North 82 of uh, Francis. Still working on catch basins, which he's been doing all summer. And he's just finishing up, hopefully by the end of the month, with his last blacktop for the year and getting ready for winter. Yeah, well, it's plugging along. It's going quickly. It's coming. Yeah. It's we coming. have to talk to, I know, in the bids. Dennis had asked us to rebid one of the routes, and I forget what happened with yeah. you. We'll have to check into that. We'll meet with him tomorrow. Okay. 2.15. Oh, that's right. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Then. Yep. Also, okay. I'm starting to think about next year's paving, too. What's that? You have to start thinking about next year's paving, getting a contract out for next year's paving. Yeah, I mean, right. it's amazing how quickly the years go. What we'll have to do is come around December, start looking at next year's paving program. Well, January, February is a good time yeah. to get, get that out to bid. Yeah. You want to get that out to bid so the contractors will give us a good price. So. Okay. Yep. All righty. Uh, Nick, planning and zoning, any reports? Uh, just planning. They, had, um, they closed the uh, public hearing for the dome this past week uh, for site plan approval. They'll be voting on that next next planning board meeting. And um, they've been studying along a couple other projects going on. I'd also like to mention that the supervisor and I met with uh, Kathy Maloney, the CEO of uh, Dutchess County Economic Development Corporation, last week. And we sat down. We had a great meeting to discuss um, how we're going to help redevelop our site out there, IBM and um, the Lanau site. And the, she was very happy and pleased with us how far along we are with our special permit law. And she said we are way beyond any other town in the county. And uh, that the general environmental impact statement will help with all the new uses. And uh, they've been sending me emails back, back oh, and good. forth about um, potential um, projects wanting to go to that site so really yeah excellent, excellent and some of them are of the uses that we have on their breweries warehouse septic service companies really yeah so good, good. we'll be ready to go good. hopefully next month we'll pass this law yeah and i forgot we had met with kathy maloney and uh, that was a very good meeting yeah we, we need to work with the county because their economic development corporation that's they try to you know bring in new businesses and we want to make sure they know we're here so that was a very good meeting. I'm glad you brought that up. Great. Tom, recreation? Uh, the fall leagues are up and running smoothly so far. It's nice to see everybody back. Um, Route 52 soccer complex, uh, that parking lot has been expanded. I've been hearing a lot of great feedback from that. Uh, and as a matter of fact, it was recently recommended uh, to our Rec Advisory Board that the lot be expanded because I believe there was some funds left over that were appropriated for it. And it's going to go out to the uh, to the pump pump house or so. That's what we're no. I don't think anybody <laughs> told the engineer have, like, this. At this no. Point, so I don't know how that got going. Okay. Okay. Well, never, then we have never to. Never got uh, to the engineer. <laughs> well, maybe John Mesker okay. knows. <laughs> well, either way, the, the the complex looks great. There's a lot more parking, and it was well needed. Uh, Lee Town Field um, drainage on the soccer field is complete. Uh, baseball field is being worked on. Uh, new benches redoing the backstop. Uh, the work on the parking lot has just begun. Uh, and I want to thank the town engineer and uh, Bill McClellan also for the hard work that you guys have done there and all the other men that, uh, that have helped there. out. Yeah, little by little. Yep. Um, and I want to hand this out to you guys. I got a handout tonight. You could pass this down. Sure. We had a new representative from the East Fishkill Baseball Association. And he came before us and he would like to propose at Brettview Field 3 which Brett View is not one of the best fields that we have. Um, he wants to turn Brett View Field 3 from one field into two. And they suggested that they are going to uh, donate the labor. Uh, they're going to bring their own equipment, skid steer, sod cutter. I talked to the town attorney. I talked to the supervisor about this. They're all on board. And I think this is exactly what we're looking for um, from, from our, our leagues yeah. or from the outside leagues. Uh, they all they ask is that we donate some clay, and I think that we can is, do uh, that. That's reasonable. Yeah. yeah, and you know that's very that is very good because when you look at our town budget, about 1.2 million dollars goes towards recreation. We have 
I forget how many, 80 acres or something of recreation fields, baseball fields, football, all the soccer fields. So if we can work with the leagues to, to accomplish some of these, this is a, I think this is a great win-win uh, situation where the leagues will benefit, they'll be involved, we'll benefit, it'll be cost savings to us. I think this is a, a quick proposal I'd like to thank uh, baseball who came up with this. Very good. That's it. Very good. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Councilman Marinero, anything from the Hillside Lake uh, Special Park District? A uh, few things. Uh, we've been working this summer to put together uh, in writing an agreement between uh, the maintenance uh, crew and uh, Steve Kapchak and the Hillside Lake Board for the maintenance and uh, uh, for the lake. Oh, good. So uh, we have it in writing. I think I gave the town yeah. supervisor a copy of that. Yeah, so that in the future, there, there's, there's no less question. misunderstanding yeah. of what's, what has to be done. Um, the dam, uh, uh, we are clear that the tree is on top, but um, the, the, the stubs remain a problem. Yeah, we're, we're That's something get, that has to be addressed. Yeah, we're going to get back to the stump issue. Right. But we, under, we recognize that. Absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, they were, uh, they were pleased that we took care of that problem over there. They, uh, they, were, uh, they were happy with that. Uh, we have replaced uh, some catch basin in El Sal Lake. Uh, we have uh, put some uh, deep uh, catch basins. So this, w this winter we'll see how that works out. I think it's going to be a lot better than what we had before. Uh, and uh, I've received a few phone calls from some of the, some of the uh, community uh, people in the lake regarding the, um, the letter that went out uh, as far as the speed uh, in the lake. Mm -hmm. They kind of, uh, the way that, that that card was worded, they have some issues with that. According, apparently the card said uh, the representative of Ilsa Lake yeah. had requested that the speed be reduced and uh, they felt that it was basically a citizen of the lake. So, okay. so a citizen that is often speaks on the lake, on matters of the lake. Right. But we but understand that. They, uh, you know, some of the board members have felt that it was not their intention oh, okay. to put that out. So okay. they, uh, I, they had some issues on, about the word. We didn't put wording. on the board members, though. We, I'm we, sorry? We didn't put on board members, Hillside Lake board members. So I... Well, they, they feel that they are the representative of uh, the board. is kind of the rep representative of the lake. And when they saw that, okay. people around the lake might misunderstand okay. that it was their request rather than the one person. <coughs> so. And yours. Well, well I, you I, just added, I just added to save money yeah, yeah, to yeah. put the additional to see if they want a, uh, a speed bump. Yeah. So I, I, it was not my idea to request for a reducing speed. No, I know. No, I know. <laughs> you could blame me for anything well, else. Got, Please don't blame me for that. <laughs> we've got about 90 responses, so we'll let you know as soon as they finish yeah. coming in. So. So, um, uh, I mean, that's, uh, that's basically it. Again, they raised the issue that um, a focus group that was mentioned in the past, what happened to that, and uh, the website. We never got back to them as far as the website. Okay. So if in case we ever decide, at least we should give them an answer. Do they have a Either website way. or is it an email address? Well, they, are, that they, had the, they, had the, they wanted to change the wording of the website, yeah. whatever they have now. Okay. Just, I think at one time I gave the document to everybody, yeah. so basically. Okay. That's about it. All right. Great. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, as for myself, uh, I represent, I lease onto the East Fisher Police Department. Uh, really nothing to, uh, nothing out of the ordinary, thank goodness. I tell my police I'm always happy when it's quiet and there's no, no earth-shaking news. Um, our police chief has retired, and uh, we've made uh, Lieutenant Keith is our, our new police chief, uh, interim police chief, and uh, things are going very well with the police department. Uh, we, we've uh, promoted Sergeant Matt Orsino to Lieutenant Orsino, 
and Patrolman Tarpey is now Sergeant Tarpey, and everything seems to be working well in the police department. And I'd like to thank uh, the men and women of our police department. I think they do a great job. Um, with that, I really have nothing else to say. Next town board meeting is October 23rd. And because uh, this is a workshop, I don't have to ask anybody to close the meeting. No. All righty, so with that, thank you everybody for coming out. Um, if you can, go to Historic Society to watch the ribbon cutting for the Ice House. It'll be Sunday at 3 o'clock, and it's a really, really neat affair. Here.